From New York, USA to Lviv, Ukraine, we welcome you to a one-of-a-kind online international event. It is the FIDE Online Olympiad. It is a grand chess event brought to you from 163 teams across the world. And I'm Grandmaster Robert Hess. Alongside me is the one and only Grandmaster Anna Muzichuk. How excited are you for this event, Anna? Hello, Robert. Uh, hello, dear viewers. I am very excited. It's the first ever online chess Olympiad and uh, 163 teams confirmed their participation, which is, of course, a huge amount. It is really a wonderfully large event with teams from all over the globe with a chance to compete for glory you know, representing their nations. It is a great honor. You and I both have had that opportunity on several occasions. So it is really such a fantastic event. And we have to give a shout out to both chess.com and to FIDE for putting on this event. And well, some people may ask, what is the online Olympiad, right? Because they may know of the Olympiad that we see in, you know, over the board, but the online Olympiad is a little bit different just because we are at our homes playing from computers and it is a worldwide event, 163 teams, over 1500 players. Anna, I can't even count that high. I mean, that's a lot of players. Uh, that's true and it's great and it confirms once again that chess is a very popular game and it unites people from all over the, all over the world. It really is. It's an international language. It brings people together. And the teams in this competition will be split into five divisions according to strength. And then they'll be divided into pools. And the, the pools will be trying to take into account time zone as well as the rating average strength here. And so each team will have two open boards two women's boards, one junior male board, and one junior female board. Anna, what do you think of that format? Uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, FIDE has come up with a new team format in which team compositions are replenished with junior boards. And I believe that will be even more exciting because we have junior boards, we have a girls board, and the team is bigger. It's uh, not separately a men's team and women's team, but it's together. Yeah, that's a really cool thing to have. And of course, um, it makes it some com additional camaraderie. There are some younger players who will get great experience playing alongside the illustrious teammates that they will have. And I want to remind everybody, importantly, of the time control. It's you know, 15 minutes plus five second increment, which means it'll be fun, rapid pace, very exciting for all to watch. And well, we, we're going to whittle it down. We start with 163 teams. We'll keep on going until finally just one team will be left standing at the end of it all. And let's start from the very beginning. Before we get to that one final team, let's talk about the format as it is in the divisions because that's how this tournament will take place. We start off with the base division. 30 teams, so three pools of 10 teams, and 12 teams will advance to Division 4. That's four teams uh, from each pool. And then you work your way to division four. Eventually you work your way to division three, division two, up to the top division, et cetera. So Anna, it's pretty cool that there will be some teams starting from day one that could potentially work their way all the way up a couple divisions. There may be room for some exciting upsets. Yes, indeed. Uh, the tournament format is also quite, uh, kind of unique. I have never uh, heard about such a format in chess events, but I think it's uh, quite interesting one and I am sure we will see some upsets, some incredible wins, some painful losses, everything will be there. And the reason I like it is because in the over the board Olympiad, in the early rounds, some of the teams uh, with players who maybe don't have grandmasters on their teams, they have a chance to play against some teams with grandmasters and that's very exciting. Even if they don't win the match as a team, it is a really cool opportunity to have that kind of challenge because in any sport or profession, you want the opportunity to face the very best. So for teams who may be starting in the base division to be able to work their way up and play teams with higher average ratings, I think that's a fantastic opportunity of both representing their countries as well as just individual chess players. It is good opportunity for growth. I totally agree with you and I believe we will see many exciting games and uh, I also hope for some unpredictable surprises. <laughs> we should expect the unexpected in an event like this. It will be a lot of fun for sure. And I mean, as I look down there, you know, 50 teams in the divisions where only so many teams get to make it through. So unlike in a pure Swiss event where you, every team will play 11 rounds. There will be moments where you're like, I'm facing elimination. 
our team needs to do something and figuring out how to handle those matchups will be quite uh, difficult and interesting. And well, let's talk about some the tiebreak procedure for the divisions because you know, it's the match point totals first and foremost. Two for a win, one for a draw, none for a loss. Then the second tiebreak will be the game point totals, which is just standard chess scoring. And then you'll have match point totals between tie teams, game point totals between tie teams. These are all pretty straightforward chess tiebreak procedure. And so nothing out of the norm here. And how about for the playoff as we look forward there? It's, you know, we start with 163 teams, then we make it all the way down to eight teams. I mean, this is really far down the line. It's about a month away from now. But Anna, as we talk about first these sort of group stages, then we get into knockouts. It's pretty interesting to note like how uh, teams will strive for different placement and figure out getting all the way to the top eight. That's a pretty daunting task. Yes, of course, you have to win lots of matches to get there. Some teams will, uh, some stronger teams will start from the latter stages. Uh, but anyway, in any case, we have to mention that this is a one month event. So one month of new games and a new tournament. It's a very long event. You said a month, sometimes time. What is time? But a month is how long this event will take place. It's fantastic. It'll be great chess to be able to be seen from you know, a home viewing experience for a very long period of time. And as we look here at this format card and we see that you know, how you work your way through, let's remind everybody again, the tie breaks, because some people don't know what happens in the case of a tie. And well, they're in the playoffs, an Armageddon game. And this is kind of cool because there's a drawing of lots to determine which of the four categories. Remember, they're open boards, they're women's boards, there's a junior female player and a junior male player. So essentially you're picking a, uh, you know, a lottery for which of these boards will play in an Armageddon. Now, some teams would prefer their, let's say China, for example, I think they would prefer that their top female players play because Ho Yifan and Ju and Jun, they're the, the top two female players in the world. And well, they would probably want that to be the choice where some teams may want their junior player or the junior female player, right? To, to, be one of the options. So it's interesting that it's a lottery system and it can really favor one team over another, but it's at random. Yeah, that will make the tournament even more exciting uh, and unpredictable. It definitely will. And you mentioned that this will be a month long event. So let's bring up the schedule of events here. And you see, wow, okay. July 25th, that is tomorrow. That is when this online Olympia starts 12 a.m. Pacific time. That's uh, you know, California time for those of you who don't know hey, what's what's specific uh, time there. And so, you know, please take a note of this, maybe take a screenshot and you can always look it up online, but try to convert that to wh which time zone you're in and watch this event. It's going to be so fun. Root on your compatriots, your favorite teams, your favorite players, because this event will last until August 30th, over a month on a, and I have every single date on this in my calendar. What about you? Uh, I'll definitely follow the event, and yes, I'd like us to mention that it's uh, 12 a.m. Pacific time, while it's 9 a.m. Uh, Central European time. I see what you did there. I went on the you know American time zone, you went to the European time zone. That was very smart to remind everybody of that. So just take a mental note that, of course, you can find all this information online, and you know then you'll be able to follow all the events live if you're awake, if it's past your bedtime. Don't stay awake for it, but you can always, of course, catch up on the action after it unfolds. And well, have you ever won a personal chess coach who can identify your strengths and weaknesses? I always did. And it gives you direct feedback and exercise to help you improve. Now everyone can have that coach with the Learn Chess with Dr. Wolf app for Android and iOS. With feedback after every move based on new technology that explains the game like never before, Dr. Wolf will build your confidence with personalized lessons recommended for your level of play. Download it now for free by clicking on the link in chat or by heading to the Google Play or App Store. And we'll be back shortly, everybody. Did you try coaching with Dr. Wolf? Uh, I, I, you know, Dr. Wolf is definitely a useful tool. I have tried it, but, you know, it's uh, definitely one of the kinds. It's pretty cool. I think you should check it out on it because I don't think you tried it yet. Uh, no, I, I didn't. That's why I asked. And I believe it's really a cool app. Well, everybody can learn more about it right now. We'll be back shortly.
We are joined here by FIDE President Arkady Dvorkovic. Arkady, great to have you on and great to see you. Happy to be here at the first ever uh, online Olympiad open, opening that FIDE and Chess.com organized together. Arkady, what kind of work went into organizing an event of this size, of this magnitude, especially as the Olympiad was supposed to be scheduled for August? We, of course, due to global concerns, had to uh, we were not able to hold that event. So how much work went into this and how were you able to organize it so quickly? Well, the, the, the whole idea um, uh, appeared right after we completed uh, again together the online Nations Cup uh, uh, back in May. Uh, and I thought that uh, uh, while we are postponing uh, the official Olympiad uh, in Khantamatinsk uh, in Moscow to the next year, uh, along with the postponement of uh, Tokyo Olympic Games, uh, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to have uh, an Olympiad online as well uh, and to repeat the experience of the Online Nations Cup uh, having mixed teams uh, and even adding uh, some juniors uh, to the squads. Uh, and we started thinking about the idea. Uh, initially, we thought that we could have all teams playing simultaneously, but then we uh, found advantages of uh, splitting teams into divisions uh, that you explained already before um, this interview. Uh, and uh, it took uh, overall about a month to uh, finalize the format uh, and to agree uh, with chess.com on the technical details. And of course, we, we are happy uh, that we were able to uh, get uh, really quickly support from our long-standing partners, uh, UGRA government uh, and um, government, uh, Governor uh, Natalia Komarova and uh, Gazprom uh, leading Russian uh, energy company. Uh, Mr. Dorkovich, it's the first ever online chess Olympiad and 163 teams confirmed their participation as it was mentioned. In my opinion, it's a huge number and it proved once again that chess is a very popular game and this is the game that unites many nations from all over the world. Uh, did you expect such a massive interest and what are your predictions for this Olympiad? Well, uh, uh... I uh, developed uh, the whole idea about the divisions uh, based on the assumption that we'll have all 195 teams, uh, since uh, there was uh, such a possibility anyway, uh, and uh, we could have uh, all of those. But of course, realistically, uh, uh, we all knew that uh, we would have uh, a bit less. Uh, skeptics were saying that we are going to have around 100. Um, I would say uh, reasonable people uh, were saying it's going to be 120, 130. Uh, at some point, I thought uh, 145, but uh, during the last two days, we got 20 more. So um, that was a huge result, uh, and uh, uh, I think it's re uh, really good uh, attendance. Uh, and the, uh, all, almost all cases where teams are not participating are related. Uh, uh, either to uh, COVID pandemics, uh, for instance, in Afghanistan, uh, uh, as far as we know, 80% of Kabul citizens are infected uh, and everyone is really uh, under huge pressure and people cannot uh, play. Uh, another uh, reason uh, for some countries is uh, bad internet infrastructure and that's one of the things you should work uh, on uh, in the future. Only in a few cases it was uh, uh, teams are not going to participate due to some um, uh, internal uh, uh, well uh, reasons uh, of um, organizational nature. Uh, but we are happy that we, we, ha we have 163 teams from all continents uh, and even some teams from the uh, associations uh, of players with disabilities, uh, a, couple of, a couple of teams uh, like that, while we will be having the, a separate um, uh, event for uh, people with disabilities, uh, we still have a possibility for them to compete in the main uh, Olympiad. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm also ha happy that uh, uh, having divisions means uh, very good visibility for weak teams that could not be even broadcast in the main Olympiad uh, since uh, they will be overshadowed by uh, big teams, by big names. Uh, uh, in our case, we have uh, now 30 teams uh, starting from tomorrow that will be online and people will watch them, not uh, just China, Russia, Ukraine, uh, United States, India, and uh, big chess countries. So that's a great opportunity. Yeah, Arkady, I was actually going to make mention of that. It seems like a really fantastic opportunity to broadcast these individuals who take chess very seriously, just like everybody else. So, it, you know, having the start 
be with these 30 teams. It gives them a chance to have their games displayed. And you never know, right, that somebody can play a great game and can get noticed. So was that intentional on behalf of FIDE to, uh, it sounds like it was, but to make sure that only so many teams were playing at a given time so that everyone had an opportunity to have their games presented and to potentially be on the live show? Yeah, initially I was thinking that uh, uh, it's a good way to avoid technical issues with too many games played sim simultaneously. But uh, uh, like next day I thought there's a much bigger reason for that. Uh, actually to show those uh, uh, weaker teams that would never uh, appear on the screens uh, otherwise. Uh, and um, I think uh, um, uh, it's, uh, it's really important. Uh, the way how we do this uh, together this this time, and uh, uh, I would say uh, that we should think about uh, a system like that even for the traditional Olympics. Uh, I'm not saying we should do this uh, uh, starting from uh, next year. Uh, we should think about that uh, uh, how to um, give uh, better visibility to all the teams, not uh, just to a few uh, teams. Also, mixing uh, players, mixing. Uh, um, men, women, and juniors uh, is another option that should be considered for some other tournaments, not just for the Olympics, uh, not just for the on online Olympics. Uh, uh, but again, there are pluses and minuses in both approaches. Uh, we should uh, uh, analyze carefully, discuss with chess players, with uh, national federations, and then uh, take uh, the decisions. Uh, yes, uh, right. I have one more question. In one of your previous interviews, you mentioned that uh, you are regularly playing chess online yourself. Uh, you even mentioned your favorite time control. Uh, online tournaments have definitely gained much more popularity within the last few months. But do you feel that online chess has a potential to grow bigger as a kind of a separate discipline? Will you pay more attention to this direction? And uh, are there plans to keep on organizing various chess, uh, chess events in the future? Uh, well, the online chess will uh, get bigger even if we will not contribute to that. <laughs> but if we will, uh, then uh, the speed of the process will be much higher. Uh, and uh, we started with a few events uh, this year. Uh, so the online Olympiad uh, is the third one, uh, in, well, fourth one actually, in the series of uh, online event events organized with the participation of uh, FIDE, I mean, Online Nations Cup. Uh, then we have had uh, the Steinitz Memorial, um, the mixed uh, one. Uh, then we had the Women's uh, Speed Chess um, uh, Cup, and uh, that went uh, very well, I believe. Well, uh, uh, you can correct me on, uh, uh, if you didn't like some things, but uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we have very good numbers uh, and uh, chess.com has all those numbers uh, and um, I think it was quite popular. Uh, we all know about other tournaments organized by other platforms as well, uh, like, like uh, Magnus uh, Tour, of course, and one of the events uh, is organized with our support, uh, the Legends Cup that is going right now, actually with some of the <clears throat> world champions uh, participating. Uh, uh, and yes, we uh, are planning uh, activities um, uh, towards the end of the year, including uh, World Bullet uh, uh, Championship uh, uh, and uh, some others, including for veterans and for juniors. Uh, so some very important events uh, uh, coming uh, in the next uh, few months. Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, having said that, uh, we should uh, uh, come together, uh, think about uh, what we should do systemically in the future about that. Uh, uh, we are not uh, 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 we are not uh, uh, saying now that uh, will be a point in time when we will have uh, when, when we are going to mix the events. Uh, uh, you are, uh, just said that it should be a, a separate track, and I fully agree. At least at this point in time, uh, given uh, uh, given. The emotional, psychological. Uh, uh, pressures from uh, uh, playing over the board uh, and anti-cheating issues uh, involved in uh, online uh, chess. Uh, but certainly uh, we should pay much more attention to online activities since it gives access to chess uh, to millions of people uh, simultaneously. Uh, and uh, we should use this opportunity to attract people to chess more and more every day. Uh, it's not just about playing, but playing chess, it's about training, uh, it's about um, uh, giving uh, uh, giving seminars, lectures, uh, uh, having interactive activities with chess professionals, uh, arbiters, trainers, uh, organizers, uh, national chess federations. 
and uh, uh, I hope that uh, we'll have the FIDE uh, Congress and FIDE uh, General Assembly uh, later this year, probably in November, in online format. So, so gathering all national chess federations together uh, online. So a uh, huge uh, perspective. Uh, and uh, we are thinking about uh, uh, about improving the system of online ratings and titles in the future, but we will need the involvement of all platforms, not uh, just the uh, feed online uh, arena, but uh, really all major platforms in this, uh, in this process to make it uh, reasonable. Wow. Uh, well, FIDE President, I really want to thank you for your extremely thorough answers and for spending your time with us and for helping organize such a great event. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on the show here. So thank you so much. That's FIDE Yes, thank you. We have a great team, uh, including yourself, our FIDE team, uh, including uh, both management board, uh, uh, FIDE council, and our managers uh, uh, doing things on the ground. Uh, you will be collaborating over the next few weeks uh, to make it happen. So uh, I wish great success to all of us and to all chess players uh, participating in the online Olympics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lokrovich. And as you see here, we are going to give time to teams that typically would not be seen throughout and over the board Olympiad because uh, as these happen, teams with lower ratings, lesser experienced players without the resources, they don't end up playing on the top board. So we will start tomorrow with the base division. And I'm actually extremely excited to be able to see these games because no matter the uh, rating of the players who are taking part all chess games can be instructive and help you learn so whether it's the teams from brunei or teams from uh, bahrain libya you see all the list of countries in front of you here it is going to be exciting for these 30 teams they have an opportunity to make it into division four right it is a system where you win your games you make it up to the next division and after the list of teams here in division four we move on to division three <laughs> and we keep going on a uh, yeah, there are four divisions, as, as it was mentioned, uh, and I also agree that it's great that we have teams from all over the world. In some of them, chess is more popular. In uh, some of the countries, chess isn't that popular. But there are some players uh, from each country almost uh, participating, and I believe it's a great opportunity, and they would uh, definitely love this experience. For sure. And as we get to Division 2, you'll see some names and some teams with some pretty big talents on them. For example, I see the Netherlands up there. Anish Giri needs no introduction to the broader chess audience. You have a team from England featuring the likes of Michael Adams. So this is, you know, when you get to Division 2 and, of course, towards the top division, you're seeing teams that have some of the highest rated players on the planet. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm just as excited for the opening rounds as I am for the finals. And I mean that very sincerely. And we, you know, as we get to these top divisions, we should also mention some of the top players who are taking part. And you see a very international flair here at the top. You have Dingley Ren, Jan Napalmashi, Alexander Grishuk, two Russians there, uh, Ivan Aronian, Wesley So. I mean, these players, Rajabov, Giri, Mamajarov, Anand, Duda, I think they are pretty well known to our broader chess audience, huh, Anna? Yes, of course, they are top players and it's great that uh, they will play. Uh, so uh, it's uh, also about the top female players. We see Hoi Fani, Hampi Kuneru, Alexandra Goryachkina, a women's world champion, Juven Jun, and many others. It is certainly going to be a great affair. We you know, didn't have slides for the top junior players and top junior female players but there's so many excellent players who are taking part in this event and it's really going to be a phenomenal one and on that note we are going to take a quick break and when we return we will hear from uh, our representation from Ugra the governor of uh, Italia Comorbo.
We are joined here by one of the big supporters of chess with academies, with many chess events, and that is the governor of Kanti Sisk, Autonomous Okrug Ugra, Natalia Komarova. We will hear a speech from her. Приветствую вас, уважаемые участники, организаторы Всемирной шахматной онлайн олимпиады Фиде. I welcome you here, participants and organizers of Fide Online Chess Olympiad. Поздравляю вас, уважаемый Аркадий Владимирович, со стартом Всемирной шахматной олимпиады. Спасибо большое, Анна, Роберт, за то, что вы сегодня объединяете нас. Интерес к шахматам растет, шахматная семья увеличивается. В этом году Фиде переводит масштабные турниры в цифровой формат. В мае это Кубок наций, сегодня Всемирная шахматная олимпиада онлайн. Мы поддерживаем объединение шахматистов всего мира в цифровом пространстве. We support the idea of united chess players from all over the world in digital space. Мы гордимся своим земляком Андреем Обычуком, который возглавит в этом турнире сборную России. We are really happy that we have our compatriots Andrei Abachuk, who will lead a national Russian team. На турнире среди шахматистов с ограниченными возможностями здоровья. Дорогие друзья, уважаемые шахматисты, желаю вам творческой, умной игры. Ждем вас в следующем году в Кантемансийске. До встречи. Dear friends, as team chess players, I wish you creative, smart games, and we will wait in you next year here in Kantemansis. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Natalia Komarova. Uh, I think it's great that Ugra is the official partner of Online Chess Olympia 2020. But besides that, Ugra is uh, rightfully considered one of the chess as one of the chess capitals of the world. Uh, Hunter Mansitsk is the city where World Chess Olympiad, uh, Women's World Chess Championships, World Team Championship, Grand Prix tournaments, and many other top-level events were held. I myself played many times in Hunter Mansitsk, and I have to say I have very good memories of the city as in 2014 I won my first World Championship title there. So thanks to Yugra once again for making chess so popular, not only in your region, but all over the world. Yeah, Anna, you seem to have many good experiences there. I've been to Kanti Mansisk twice myself. They're huge supporters of the game of chess. As I briefly mentioned earlier, academies, many events, huge support to chess in that region. And it really wouldn't be possible to hold many of the top events and the international events without their support. So I just want to um, you know, thank them again for their support. And well, we're going to take a quick break and when we return we will be recapping everything that we are going to see over the next month so stay tuned we'll be back shortly
on a both you and I have experience with Olympiads, you more so than I, but there's such a great event, brings out the best in team spirit in a, in a very individual game, right? For the most part, chess, we just play our games, our results are our own, and we move on to the next one. But in the Olympiad, it's a great national spirit, it's a great team spirit. So, I mean, would you like to talk a little bit about your experience in the Olympiad and what it's meant to you? Uh, my Olympiad experience started uh, back in 2004, I believe, when I participated when I participated in my first Olympiad when I was just 14 years old girl. And for me, of course, it was like a big event and I was really looking forward to participate in such a huge event as Olympiad. And as you mentioned, yes, Olympiads are uh, at the moment, they are team events, we don't have individual Olympiads. And Olympiads are organized every two years, so we don't have to wait four years as some of the other sports when need to. So in this case, you are kind of lucky. I really like Olympiads. I like this team spirit about which you mentioned. Uh, for me, it's, a, it's an honor to represent Ukraine. And of course, I'm trying to do my best uh, while, of course, so we have a strong team. And uh, most of the times we are competing for the high prizes, so for the top places. Uh, so, of course, it's also a lot of stress, but uh, not without it. <laughs> That's for sure. And in general, at many chess events, you sort of see a similar cast of characters. Uh, and when you're playing in round robin events, you get the same opponents. And the Olympiad really is unique in that it brings together so many nations. We talked about in this online Olympiad, there are 163 teams. That is a tremendous amount, over 1,500 players from all around the world. Now, when we, we compete, or in my case, coach at the Olympiad these days, you get to meet so many people that you would not normally have a chance to meet. And I think that's what is so beautiful about chess. It is a very international game. And as a reminder, as you see here, over 1,500 players from 163 teams around the globe. That is really an international affair. Yes, of course, it's a very big tournament. And uh, before coming to the Olympiad, I often get many messages from uh, chess lovers because they know that almost all the top players usually participate in the Olympiad. So they always write me and they are kind of asking in advance, will it be possible to meet with you? I am a fan of yours. It will be really great if there is an opportunity to take a photo or to talk with you a little bit. And of course, uh, as you mentioned, uh, yes, this is the tournament where many people are coming and where uh, people from uh, the countries once again where chess is not that popular or where the chess level is not that high they have the opportunity to see the top level players absolutely and resources may not typically be available to players from those countries so that's especially why i'm excited that tomorrow begins the base division so teams that have huge chess lovers, some chess talent, and teams that would not normally get broadcast on the Olympiad in person because of so many games going on at the same time. There will be 30 teams competing starting tomorrow, and you will be able to watch all of this action on chess.com throughout the entire month from July 25th, which is when the Olympiad starts a day from now, until August 30th. That's a lot of chess. I'm excited for it. Anna, are you getting excited now that we've had and been able to introduce this entire online Olympiad? Uh, yes, I am excited too, of course. And once again, uh, look at the date, look at the time, uh, try to follow your favorite teams, your uh, favorite uh, chess players, because they all need your support. Well, I wouldn't be myself if I didn't end on a little bit of a joke. The Olympiad is an amazing event, of course, but I have a little bit of sour memories thanks to one Anna Muzichuk here because at the last Olympiad in the final round when I was coaching the U.S. women's team, which uh, team did the U.S. women play and what was the result of that match? I think it's not a good memory for your team, but also it wasn't the great memory for our team because we were so close to winning that Olympiad. And in the end, we shared the first place, but we were second uh, on the tie breaks. Uh, though, of course, we had also many good memories. And for me personally, uh, I remember the Olympiad in Baku where I won the gold medal on the first board. Also, our team, or our women's team uh, was uh second or third and our men's team was also in the top three so all together we won the nonaga prindashvili cup so it was a really huge success for ukraine 
It was indeed, and Anna is too kind to say that the Ukrainian women's team beat the American women's team, and so that was a bit of a heartbreak for me. But on an all-serious note here, it's been, of course, a great pleasure to cover this opening ceremony with you. Everybody, please tune in for this BeatHS.com online Olympiad. It will be throughout from July 25th to August 30th. You'll be able to watch all the action unfold, and really, just enjoy the chess, get acquainted with new players, and, well, reacquaint yourself with some of the familiar faces that you may not have seen in a while. And of course the top player. So Anna, that's all I have for you here. Any final thoughts as we wrap up this opening show? Uh, well, to end it, I'd like just to say that we are looking forward for another month of exciting chess games, uh, top level grandmasters and chess lovers from all over the world, a brilliant sacrifices and unexpected moves, the joy of wins and painful losses. I am sure we will see all of it. Therefore, stay tuned and support your favorite teams and favorite chess players. The first games are already starting tomorrow. Certainly. The action gets underway tomorrow. Everybody, please enjoy this online Olympiad.